speaking of like the legacy series uh do you know uh, mm-hmm. uh scott mccord is the one who played the original dan Cuzo, but now uh sure. going to the reboot now it's jonah weinberg uh playing mm-hmm. dan- the new dan Cuzo. how different do you mm-hmm. feel uh, a connection between scott mccord's dan Cuzo and uh jonah weinberg's dan Cuzo? that's uh that's a good question um you know when we first started the first series um Scott was a few years older than me, and he was much more he had much more experience than I did in voice acting. And uh, I sort of deferred to him at the time. You know, I was still trying to find my voice with Drago, and uh, I felt that that version of Dan, the way that Scott did it, he kind of almost had like a chip on his shoulder. He was like very cocky as Dan, and I felt like I was sort of brought into well, Drago sort of brought into sort of bring him down a peg you know to sort of keep him humble um and and that was really fun to to sort of see dan like go oh i can do anything and then and then he immediately couldn't um and i go well try to stay calm dan you know that kind of thing um but now jonah is a few years younger than me and so now it's a little bit more like i feel more comfortable in this character and that so I'm bringing him in, not just as Dan, but as a new voice actor to this thing of ba- Bakugan and going, you know, um, almost as a father figure. And so, like, it's this guidance and this gentle, you know, thing with him. And But at times it also feels like kind of a brotherly love type of thing. I think in this new series they've really worked on um, their dynamic and, and making them partners and work together. And they, and they make sure to have those quiet moment so it's been cool to explore that um and the first bakugan it started with the meeting of of drago and dan and they sort of had to get to know each other and discover this relationship but in the new series it kind of feels like very quickly they got to a a comfort a comfortable place and i like that i i like that we've already seen them sort of figure it all out but in this new one it was like we know who these guys are. Let's throw them together and, and show this friendship they have, um, which is really cool. You know, um, I feel like in the years since I've grown as a person and an actor and I've, you know, I'm not having to force Drago all the time and always make him be angry. You know, I, I think that was what I tried to do in the beginning. There's all this battling going on. Um, but now I feel like, like I said before, I'm trying to play Drago as more emotionally intelligent, which I think is more interesting. So anytime I can be quieter, um, I do. Because um, often when there's a lot of noise going around, the one person who goes, hey, let's talk about this, sometimes that will cut through. That seems more dramatic, you know, than just adding to the noise. So, um, so yeah, it's been a journey, and I, I'm definitely not the same Drago I was when I started, but... Uh, but yeah, I, I'm very grateful for both Scott and Jonah. They, they've both given me so much to play off of, and, and there are different levels of experience and different energies as the character really gave me a lot to work with. Um, yeah, so I, I'm just really thankful for both of them. And I think uh, I think the fans will like both of them too. I, I think they're both really good guys. They've both been kind to me in and outside of the studio. Uh, they've been kind to their fans. Um, so it's one of those rare things, I think, where... People aren't necessarily saying one is better than the other. It's just as time goes by, we we have someone new. And uh, it's great to see people appreciate both. Do you want to know more about Jason DeLine, the voice of Drago? Check out this exclusive interview with the Pocket Talking Longer podcast right now.